Broadcasts of Hiki no are made possible by the support of viewers like you. Mahalo! And by Bank of Hawaii Foundation. Investing in Hawaii's future by promoting collaboration, critical thinking, and other 21st century skills through Hiki no. Aloha mai kako. My name is Nanani Collier. I'm Kamu Kalahiva. And I am a Kwindalin Ka'apa. We're here on the grounds of Bishop Museum, one of our learning sites for our school, Halalo Kahi Public Charter School. Home base for today's episode of Hiki no, the nation's first statewide student news network. Hiki no means can do, and you'll see just what students from Martinsville schools can do. This episode's team is made up of schools from four islands. From Kauai, there's Kapa'a High School. From the island of Hawaii, there's Kea'au High School. And on Maui, we have Pihei Charter School. On Oahu, there's Mid-Pacific Institute, Wanalua High School, and Mililani Middle School. Nanakuli High School, and Wheeler Middle School. And of course, Halalo Kahi Public Charter School. On this show, you'll hear from diverse voices across the island chain. Telling stories that connect communities. On Higino. Can do! Before we introduce our first story, we'd like to recognize the grand organization that made Hikino a reality. They believe that Hawaii could create the nation's first statewide student news network. They put their faith in us and said, can do. To them we say, mahalo. Now, on with the show. Here at Bishop Museum's Hawaii Sports Hall of Fame, some of Hawaii's outstanding athletes and their achievements are memorialized. Our first story on today's episode of Hiki no takes us over to Mid-Pacific Institute, where you'll meet Olympic hopeful kayaker Kalei Koho'okele. It's the day in, day out work. Getting up, being at the Alawai at five o'clock, training for two hours, going to school. Sean Kalei Koho'okele attends Mid-Pacific Institute. He is a normal teenager in every way, except that he is also an aspiring Olympic athlete. Occasionally, Kalei can be seen at the Alawai Canal, where he is currently training with the senior members and senior coaches of the USA Flatwater Sprint kayaking team. Kalei is a 200 meter specialist. He's um, very uh, fast twitch, anaerobic, explosive. Naturally, he'll uh, gravitate to the 200 meters where he's, he's already very good. Clay is currently the number one ranked kayaker in the country under the age of 18. He has this incredible desire to understand everything about it. He's paddled in one men's, he's paddled in six men's, he's paddled around the world, he's paddled with adults for a long time, and so his level of his game is unlike any athlete we've ever had in the program because he loves to do it that much. But what really gives Clay the edge is the inspiration he draws from his family. In 2008, Kalei's great-grandmother died of a heart attack. Two months later, his mother passed away from breast cancer. It was a tough time for him. He just tried to stay focused, try to keep busy so he could not think about it too much and just channel his energy towards his goals. As we know, you don't, you don't ever forget, yeah. But... Kalei's torso is engraved with his mother's face as it reminds him that his mother is always by his side. I just asked my uncle if I could have a tattoo of her and he said, yeah. And... It's just a remembrance of her. My mom was more like a supporter, so she would go to all my races and just cheer everybody on and give everybody high hopes for everything in the race. She has instilled in him a never give up, always do your best attitude, and this has guided Kalei through his life. My mom showed me how to stay mentally tough. It's, it's, it was a hard, hard way to see her um, suffer like that. Thinking of her pain and what she went through and stuff and it just made me a lot stronger. Sean Kalei Kaho'okele continues to grow with the undying support of his family. It was just the way they showed me how not to give up and stuff you know it's just uh, a way of staying strong and staying mentally tough knowing that I she's always with me and always next to me and it's always looking down on me. Driven by strong family ties, Clay is ready to take it as far as he can, maybe even as far as Olympic gold. This is Asia Malia Voorhees reporting for Mid-Pacific Institute for Hiki No. 
If you'd like to comment on this story or anything you see on Hikino, join the discussion at facebook.com slash do or send us a tweet at twitter.com slash do. I'm here at one of Halalo Kahi's computer labs, where the computers you see were graciously donated by Wheeler Air Force Base. Our next story comes from Wheeler Middle School, where you'll find out how students keep in touch with their military parents who are deployed to faraway places. There are over 700 military dependents enrolled at Wheeler Middle School. They are frequently separated from their military parents, but have many ways to keep in touch with them. I ended up separated from my dad because he had to move to Texas before being deployed. We didn't have any family in Texas, so we decided to go to Georgia. I kept in touch with my dad by him commuting with the 12-hour drive every other month. And um, he, we used to talk on Yahoo Chat so we could see him, and he used to send us cards. For those separated by distances too far to travel, there have been changes in ways a family may communicate. My dad has been deployed three times. One time he went to Kosovo while we were in Germany, and the other two times he was in Iraq. So the first time in Kosovo, we, got, we had to talk on the phone, and we didn't hear from him very often. And the longest time we went without see, like hearing from him was four months. And my mom was like freaking out because she thought something was wrong. And then the next deployment, we got to talk to him on the phone like twice a week. And then the third time, we got to talk to him on Skype. I think communicating with my dad is very important because me and my mom don't always agree. So when me and him are on Skype, I can talk to him about like problems and stuff. So I don't get so stressed out anymore. Jennifer Garcia and her mother, who is currently stationed in Iraq, Skype almost every day. Skype is a program where you get to talk with your family well, practically anybody who's not there with you and then just talk to them, to them on the computer. We usually just talk about the normal stuff, you know, like what happened in school and what, what's going on. And Papa just made dinner. Oh, okay. How was school? Good. We Skype practically every night for five minutes because my mom, she works in the morning for it. For when it's at night for us, it's in the morning for her. In five minutes. So, okay, talk to you soon. Bye, love ya. Bye. Mommy, bye. Now, the next time you take a long drive, talk to a loved one on the phone, or chat using a computer, you all have something in common with many of us here at Wheeler Middle School. This is Kimberly Lopes from Wheeler Middle School for Hiki Now. I'm here at one of our outdoor learning sites, Kokuokali Valley's Ho'olu Aina. Within this pristine valley, students learn and practice land stewardship and wise management of natural resources. Speaking about kuleana or responsibilities, let's head over to Koya Island with students from Kapa'a High School reporting on the pros and cons of reviving Planned Parenthood. Planned Parenthood left the island of Kauai 15 years ago after Hurricane Aniki because of financial difficulties. Kauai is currently the only county in Hawaii without a Planned Parenthood. Planned Parenthood of Hawaii is on, currently is on three islands. We are on Oahu, uh, Big Island, Hawaii, and on Maui. And we are looking to bring our services to the island of Kauai. We would come and offer the services that the community needed most, um, which includes um, reproductive and sexual health care, um, sexually transmitted disease screening and testing services. We will not currently be offering abortion services on island. However, we will be doing abortion counseling, talking with young women who have pregnancy tests that come back positive about all their options um, to, as they move forward. According to AmericanPregnancy.org, in the United States, 468,988 babies are born to teen mothers every year. Recent Center for Disease Control reports show that 45% of teens in the United States, ages 15 to 19, have had sexual intercourse. And 12% of those having intercourse don't use any form of birth control, a trend that Planned Parenthood tries to reverse. Planned Parenthood affected me when I was first 16 in San Diego, California. I couldn't go to my mother, didn't feel like I could go to my father, and so I went to Planned Parenthood when I was 16 to get on birth control. In my personal opinion, 
Yeah, I, I want my child to come to me first. I, I would feel almost offended, yeah, if they didn't come to me. I thank God, what did I do scare them away where they can't even talk to me? You know? I, personally, I don't see any cons against having Planned Parenthood. I just think it's a good resource for kids to have access to. We asked Kapa'a High School students what they felt about Planned Parenthood coming to Kauai. Planned Parenthood will make kids feel like it's okay to have sex. I think that bringing Planned Parenthood back to Hawaii would be a great idea because we have so many teenagers getting pregnant nowadays and it would provide so many opportunities and help that they could get if they were to become pregnant. Kapa'a High School currently has 10 girls who are either pregnant or already a mother. Kapa'a is the only high school on Kauai to offer a nursery for teen parents. How will Planned Parenthood be received when they return to the island of Kauai? We'll know in the fall of this year. This is Savannah Frisk signing off with Hiki No. Bishop Museum Science Learning Center explores the use of various mediums to share important knowledge. Kihei Public Charter School on the beautiful island of Maui will teach you how to produce TV-style broadcasts on the internet. Good morning, KCS. Today is the 14th. This is the start of a live broadcast over the internet. This can be very fun to do. It's also very easy to set up. You just need a decent desktop computer or laptop, a video camera, a microphone, and two monitors. You'll also need a good internet connection. Connect the camera to the computer through USB or Firewire. Connect the microphone to the computer. Connect an optional second monitor which can be used by the announcer as a teleprompter. This is the basic hardware setup. There are several online services that are free to use for online broadcast. You just sign up for a free account and provide details such as the channel name and a description. Then all you have to really do is hit the go live button. To do a live broadcast, there are different jobs such as setting up the camera, running the online service, or being in front of the camera. It's possible to run all this by yourself, but it's a lot easier when you have help. As you can see, setting up a live broadcast on the internet is easy. This is Chris Morris from Kihei Charter School for Hikino. Here at Halalo Kahi, music and dance play a vital role in students' overall growth and development. Over at Mililani Middle School, two gifted violinists express their passion for their instrument and their dedication to music. I am a songwriter and I'm an aspiring musician. Music does affect my everyday life. It's crucial. Um, music is everywhere, it's in the house, it's outside, it's in the car. You hear music everywhere and I just enjoy that. I enjoy playing music. Even though like some people say that all oh, music is for nerds, you know, like you gotta see a different picture of who's who's playing the instrument. So like I, I love to play the violin and so is my partner John and like we perform everywhere. I practice every single day and mostly because I feel like it. What you call practice I call play. When you're playing a duet, you have to be prepared because if, if you, there's a spot you can't play, you're going to be practicing it and you're going to start all over again. Your partner is going to be irritated. In an orchestra, you have to know your part because there's going to be all, all this other all sound and it's going to drown you out. You have to be part of your group and if you can't play your part, then you should go home and practice. For everyone else out there who wants to be a musician, who wants to be known, who wants to share their music with the world, don't ever give up that dream. These two Milan Middle School students prove that dedication and hard work will pay off. 
John and Joseph recently won blue ribbons at the Hawaii American String Teachers Association Solo and Ensemble Competition. This is Brooke Suda from Minalani Middle School reporting for Hikino. If you would like to comment on this story or anything you see on Hikino, join the discussion at facebook.com hikino can do or send us a tweet at twitter.com slash hikino can do. Our next story takes us to Hawaii Island where you'll meet students from Kiao High School to learn how to make salsa from scratch. Hi, I'm Bodhi Sharner. And I'm Raleen Mae Adrian. Today, we'll be showing you how to make salsa verde. The items you'll need are Tomatillos, serrano peppers, garlic, onions, cilantro, and salt. First, cut the peppers in half. Then remove some of the seeds, but remember, the more seeds, the more spice. Next, add the peppers, tomatillos, and garlic to the pot with one cup of water. While it's cooking, you can mince up your onions and cilantro. When the tomatillos start to brown or wrinkle, carefully take your dish and put the ingredients into the blender. Add salt to taste. Blend until liquid smooth. Once it's completed, mix all your ingredients into a bowl. And that's how you make salsa verde. For the complete recipe, go to pbshawaii.org. Bishop Museum's Hawaiian Hall houses a multitude of ancient cultural antiquities that possess mana or spiritual power which commands respect. In our next story, teachers from Moanalua High School share ghost stories about Moanalua which are tied to Hawaiian culture, the site of a hale on campus and the Moanalua of Hupua'a. Well, when I first started teaching, I used to run around the track. I used to run about a mile in the morning, four easy laps just to get exercise. One morning I was running around here, it was about five in the morning in, in October, November, so it's still really dark. And I got to the uh, scoreboard end of the field. I felt really cold when I got by the scoreboard. I didn't think anything of it and I went another lap and I felt cold again. Then on my walk down, I went by the scoreboard and I, I thought I heard some footsteps in the gravel behind me. And about uh, halfway, about around this area right here, I heard them again and I kept turning around, nothing was there. And then uh, I just got panicked and I ran back to my room and haven't run since in the morning. Like many schools, Moanalua has its share of campus school stories, passed down from upperclassmen to freshmen, from veteran teachers to rookies. Those familiar with the campus see a connection between the strange happenings and ancient Hawaiian culture. Well, from what I heard, it's a woman's heyal in the cafeteria. The cafeteria worker said, yeah, they're women, because they'd hear the women speak to them. Heiaos served as temples, or places of worship for the Hawaiians. Moanalua High School is suspected to be built over what was once a navigational heiau. Another popular speculation is the talk of Moanalua night marchers. Night marchers are spirit warriors that escort their ali'i, or chief, from the top of the valley down to the sea. Moanalua High School happens to be right in the path of these night marchers. Moanalua Valley, um, it was said that the night marchers came from Moanalua Valley and they marched down, um, down the valley. And nightfall is a time when most of these stories begin. In fact, Merle Harada, retired Moanalua teacher, has actually taken visitors on ghost walks of the Moanalua campus, where she introduces them to the spirits on the rock walls. The closest to a human head. They have faces. And many of the campus stories tell of a ghostly woman. She was facing the field. When I called, I said, excuse me, excuse me, you know, you need help, or what are you doing? From here, she had turned like this. And that's when I just saw, I saw no face. She had long hair, it was just white. No, no features, you know, no ears, no nose, eyebrows. No eyes, just flat face. But for all the chicken skin moments, all of the witnesses agree that these campus spirits mean no harm. I think the spirits here, with my experience, uh, aren't malicious, they're just uh, mischievous. They like to play around. And many of the spirits feel right at home here at Moanalua. So the storeroom that's supposed to be her house is the one outside on the side 
of the building. From the possibly haunted campus of Moana Loa, I'm Sharina Chrysostomo for Hikino. Well, that story gives us a whole new meaning to school spirit. Our last story takes us to Nanukuli High Intermediate School Performing Arts Center as they prepare to travel far across the Pacific Ocean to perform at one of the world's largest performing arts festivals in Edinburgh, Scotland. In August 2011, the Nanakuli High and Intermediate School Performing Arts Center will represent Hawaii and the United States at the Fringe Festival in Edinburgh, Scotland, the largest performing arts festival in the world. Out of 2,200 American high schools nominated to perform at the renowned Fringe Festival, only 62 were selected. The MPAC was one of them. However, performing at the Fringe Festival did not become a real possibility until a year later after the invitation. Families could not afford the costs of the trip, so the Performing Arts Center was faced with the overwhelming challenge of raising over $115,000 in less than a year. Fortunately, the community rallied together to support the Impact's dream of performing in Scotland. Reaching the goal of performing at the Fringe Festival has already changed many of the students and staff of the Impact program. Looking back nine months ago and seeing myself now, I think I gained more confidence in my performance because this program gained more recognition and support from the country and the community. And knowing that we're just as talented as the other groups that's going. I think for the IMPACT program, what it's done, it's given us more recognition. Uh, we've been doing this for 20 years, so you know, all of a sudden now people know about us and I think they're very supportive. Um, they're asking us to perform at various events, which gives the students and even the alumni a lot more experience. I've seen the program gain so many new supporters and fans from people who might not have known about us before. But due to all the coverage about Scotland, we've gotten so many more supporters and people to add into our NPAC family. And I've seen the students grow and become more proud to be from Nanakuli, as well as being more proud to be a part of the performing arts program. Nanakuli High and Intermediate School is at the bottom of almost every academic list. Yet the NPAC continues to produce quality productions as well as make academic strides. Approximately 82% of students at MPAC met state benchmarks for reading. About 90% of students at MPAC, many of whom are considered high risk, graduate from high school. Also, 87% of MPAC seniors who graduated in the last three years are registered or enrolled in college. I think it's changed me a lot in a sense that I realized this was something that I couldn't do alone. Um, you know, we rarely went out to ask for help from businesses and corporations and, and people. But knowing that this was such a big challenge in terms of the money, you know, I had to put my pride aside. And I realized that lesson that, you know, to make dreams come true, you can't do it alone. You need the support of other people. And when you're doing something that you believe in, that the kids are passionate about, that shows success, uh, people will rally around you. And on July 31st, 2011, the students and staff of MPAC will rally around each other as they embark on their amazing journey to Scotland. This is Shailene Curtis from Nanakuli High and Intermediate School reporting for Hikino. Thank you for joining us on this edition of Hikino, the nation's first statewide student news network. We hope you enjoy this journey to diverse schools and communities on Oahu, Maui, Kauai, and Hawaii Island. Next week, Hikino will be coming to you from Lahaina Luna High School in West Maui. Lahaina Luna students will be introducing stars from Campbell High School, Aliomana Middle School, and Kawai Hona Okanaoao Public Charter School on Oahu. On Hawaii Island, you'll see reporters from Hilo High School, Kamehameha School Hawaii Campus, and Keao High School. You'll also hear from Kauai High School on Kauai and Iao Intermediate on Maui. We leave you now with a video haiku of Halalo Kahi's very own traditional sailing canoe. Thank you for supporting this project and for believing that Hawaii's youth, Hikino, can do.
Broadcasts of Hiki no are made possible by the support of viewers like you. Mahalo! And by Bank of Hawaii Foundation. Investing in Hawaii's future by promoting collaboration, critical thinking, and other 21st century skills through Hiki no.